Yep. There's the shield. In the next bag of parts, bag three, we have the feet. We have two of them because he has two feet. All right. Fairly good detail on them. These two parts can be snapped together. There's, if you look, you can see the rivet holes in the front of the feet. They're very well nice. They're very well done. There's some nice detail there. Put the feet back in the bag. Put them in the down box. All right. Next up, this is the back side of the shield. Big piece of plastic again. Nice detail work on the back side of the shield. As you can see, well detailed. Big piece of plastic again. I built models that are smaller than this shield. Okay. I can see another spot right there that would require some cleanup work. So it's not 100% perfect. I mean, these Gundam kits, they're nice, but they're not perfect. All right, they're very well engineered. Here's the head, parts of the head, the V-fin. It's white on this guy, some Gundams it's yellow. Lots and lots of little grooves and holes on this. Here's chest piece, I'm pretty sure. No, that's torso pieces right there. All right, let me put the head pieces away. All right. Now we come to the fun parts. The beam sabers. Clear styrene, big pieces of plastic. Reddish tinted clear styrene. It'd be fun to put LEDs behind those things and have them light. Don't know if it's possible or not. I'd have to use button cells if I did it. I know I can buy them off eBay where they light up and I can put these in the handles themselves and they use small button cells. The water slide decals or decals, okay, they're fairly nice. Don't see any problems with them. No out of alignment, no nothing like that. That's a rarity in a Gundam kit. Then we get to the sprue that amazes me every time I see one of these from a Bandai kit. Four different colors on one sprue. Okay, Bandai's been doing that. I've had more than one kit where I open it up and there's multiple colors on a sprue. They even did clear styrene. Here's some yellow, clear yellow for the eyes on the head. And there's the back plate for the head. So I will be able to light this and have his eyes glowing yellow just fine. Here's the chest vents. I'm pr from the looks of it, I'll be able to have light coming out of those because I know the full-sized mock-up they did in Japan had lights coming out of his chest vents. So if I decide to do that, I can. I don't know if I'm going to. I know I'm going to light his eyes. Very minimum, those eyes are going to light up. Okay. Now we're getting to some of the duplicated parts. Here's our sprue removal tool. And you get two of them. I know Bandai actually sells that as a separate item. Okay. One of the parts came off the sprue. Those gates are so small that comes right off. The attachment points are really fine. Here, just fell off on its own. And you can see what little nicks it left in the plastic. Almost nothing. Real, real, real easy to clean up. Okay? And again, just, these look like they're shoulder joints. So let's put them back in the bag. Move on to the next one. This is reviews getting along. Here we have more internal frame structures. These are sprue that are designed to be put together. You take one half, snap it over another half. We have two identical sprue in this bag. The, again, these are internal structure parts. As you can see, they have spots for the poly caps to snap into and be held in place with the joints. Again, this is a snap kit. I intend to use glue because I intend to weaken the pins. We will talk about that in a little bit, especially when I get to building. Okay, that one don't want to go back in its bag in the time I have, so we set him aside. Okay, we get to the backpack. 
one of the parts came off. This looks like an internal frame where legs attach or something. Here we have the backpack and some hands. This thing I think has four hands, so I can interchange the hands. Notice the ball joint on the hands. That's going to give it free mobility. Here's the backpack. Here's the reaction engines. And I'm sure you guys can see it. There's some pretty good detail on the inside of those. They're molded very well. One of the things I have very little, I mean, I've seen very little of, is seam lines. You know where the two halves of the mold clamp together? Seen very little bit. This one part right here has the worst ones I've seen. Okay? You can definitely see it on the backpack part. It's going to have to be cleaned off that part. Definitely there. Alright, next bag. This is torso and the gun. Again, it's molded in color. I plan on painting it, so I'm just going to use the color of the sprue as a guide for getting my color right. I plan on painting it so I can weather it and a few other things. There's a pin mark right there. Sorry I'm yawning. It's kind of late. I'm past my bedtime. There's a pin mark there that's going to have to be removed. But other than that, very little seam, very little flash, no flash whatsoever. Again, tiny attachment points. We have the beam rifle. Okay. The beam rifle. Let's compare it to that fighter plane, shall we? The beam rifle is almost the size of the fighter jet. That's a scary thought. You come flying over the mountain, you see this thing point something at you. It's the same size as your plane and pull the trigger. That's going to be a heck of a bang. Now, I'm pretty sure most of this is the beam rifle. Let's get these guys back in their baggie. Alright, now we're getting to the arms and legs. Another set of polycaps. Here's the arms with the beam saber handles. And we have a duplicate sprue. Okay, one of the things the box shows is it shows the shoulder caps lit up on this corner. Now, if you take a look from the underside, I don't know how the heck I'm going to light that. There's this big, huge, thick pin right there. And I can follow an LED down to get in there, but I'm going to have to do one heck of a job of light block to keep just this little corner lit. I'm basically going to have to paint, do the light block from the outside of this part. Because there's no way to light block that on the inside way too tight of a clearance inside there unless I completely remove this pin but that pin goes all the way down and it's huge so we'll see if I light the shoulders like they are on the box top okay I'm sure this video has gotten way long already this is a lot of parts in the box okay I'm going to take photos of all the parts and I'll make a photo slideshow of the parts and put it up as well I forgot to bag the polycaps with that one. Last bag. Two identical sprue for the legs. So I'm going to pull one out and show it to you guys. This is a heavy thing. This kit's going to be heavy when it's done. But here's the leg parts. Again, some massive pins on it. And for the most part, you don't see them on the other side. Although, if you get some contrast going on the legs, you can see tide marks and stuff. There's going to be some cleanup work there. And yes, it's on both sets. Alright, so, here's the deal. Let me readjust the camera. So I'm looking at you guys. Okay, I didn't do that well. Close enough. I got the camera way up high, so it's looking down at the parts. So now I'm looking up like someone walked in the room and I'm sitting down. Um, 
here's what I'm going to do. It's a snap kit. I'm going to weaken a lot of the pins because I can tell from looking at these pins, they're big. Once you put it together, they're not going to come apart. There's too much friction in there and they're probably too tightly fit. So what I'm going to do is weaken them. I'm going to sand them so they slide in and out instead of hold tight. The reason for that is I want to assemble the kit, take a good look at how she works. From talking to a few people, Bandai really, really, really tightly engineers their kits. They so tightly engineer them that quite often a 1 32nd of an inch layer of paint will bind up the joints and it won't move. So I want to see where the tight joints are, where the tight fitting spots are so I can sand them before I paint them so the layer of paint won't interfere with the mobility of the suit. Or I can just glue the whole thing solid and not have it move. The poly caps in there, that's going to be hard. And if you don't get the paint, the thickness right, the paint will scratch while it's moving and then you'll have scratch marks and it'll look like a toy. And that's not what we want. So, I'm going to put her together examine it, figure out where to paint, what to do. A lot of these parts like I showed you are going to need um, obvious cleanup, okay, because there's tide marks and stuff on them. It's not that hard of a cleanup, you just hit it with some Mr. Surfacer and sand it. That'll fix a lot of that, okay. Mr. Surfacer, for some of you if you don't know, is a thick primer. Brush it on, sand it off, if you lightly sand it correctly, you'll get rid of those tide marks and pin marks. Um, once I tear it apart, I'm going to do the alligator clip forest painting method. Alligator clips on bamboo skewers. I don't know if I can do bamboo skewers on this thing because the parts are pretty big. But I'm going to use bamboo skewers, yeah. But I don't know if the alligator clips and the big chunk of styrofoam holding them, all these parts everywhere sticking up. Um, I don't know if that will work on this because, again, these parts are really big. They're two or three times the size of a normal Gundam kit. Okay. And then once it's painted, I'm going to seal it, put it together, put the decals on it, seal it again, weather, then seal. So she's going to get a couple of seal coats. So I'm going to have to check for the clearances on these parts to make sure it works right. Okay, she's going to get painted, she's going to get detailed. That'll be the fun part. I suspect if I were to sit down tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. and start working on this kit, I could have it together by 4 or 5 p.m. Even with that large number of parts, because it's just putting it together. The last Gundam kit I put together took me about 10 hours to put together. I didn't paint, well, I painted it, but I didn't paint the whole kit. I just detail painted a few areas and did a panel lines with micron pens to highlight the panel lines. You won't use Gundam markers on this. When I weather it I'm going to use oil paints because I like weathering with oil paints. Did it on the command center for the Mercury 9. Those videos will be coming up in a couple of weeks. You saw the channel update before this one so you know what you know what's up there. Alright, I'm going to quit rambling because this video is long enough. I'm going to get building. Talk to you guys later. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to say. That's an email. The Gundam videos are going to be live. In other words, once I have enough footage to put a video up, I'm going to. The Mercury 9 or not. You guys caught that in the other video. The one before this. I will talk to you guys in a little while.